Ah yes, video game themed TV game shows. There's been quite a few of these and I think every country had their own iterations. The US had shows like Nick Arcade and Video Power, the UK had Games Master and if you lived in, well, pretty much the rest of the world, chances are you had this guy. Now, I'm sure most of my English speaking audience is looking at this troll doll reject and thinking, what the hell is this? Well my friend, this is Hugo. Hugo is a troll who's out to rescue his family from an evil witch named... Uh, well, she has a lot of different names depending on the region, so just pick from one of these. But you know what? I think at this point, even those who grew up with the character are getting a little confused. See, chances are you thought Hugo was a TV show that only aired in your country. Hell, you probably even thought that Hugo was created in your country. But unless you're Danish, that's just not true. You see, Hugo was a TV game show which aired in over 40 countries. Basically, kids would call the TV show's hotline and if you were selected, you'd be playing the game at home live on national TV using your phone as a controller. So, what is Hugo? Where did he come from? And how did it spread so quickly? And what happened to him? That's what we're looking at today. Hugo was created by a small Danish company called Interactive Television Entertainment in 1990, which then aired on the public Danish television station TV2. The concept was simple but highly appealing to kids and even pretty futuristic for the time. All you had to do was wait for the hotlines to open and then call and hope you'd be selected as the next contestant. If you got picked, you'd then play one of several possible levels, though they all basically amount to the same game but with a different coat of paint on it. The controls were simple 3 or 4 button layouts as you flew balloons, skateboarded, snowboarded, took a nice leisurely stroll in the woods and even occasionally took the time to rescue your kidnapped family. Yes, the games were simple, but they had to be. After all, you were playing over the phone which came with its set of limitations. The first and most obvious is that you need to have your phone near the television, or else that would mean you wouldn't be able to see what the hell you're doing. The game also suffered from some compatibility issues, namely from rotary phones. So if you were watching the game show from your grandparents' house, you probably didn't even bother calling the hotlines. And then of course, the major issue that plagued almost every player out there was the lag. I mean, think about it. You are watching this being broadcast through live national television. You have to wait for the TV signal to reach you, then you have to press the right input on your phone and then wait for the TV signal to reach you once again with your input choice. Now, I've never actually entered the Hugo game show, but you could often tell just how laggy the controls were based on most players' terrible response time. Simply put, a lot of contestants simply failed to adapt to this particular limitation. But despite these issues, Hugo was a success in its native homeland and from there a media empire was born, the Hugo Empire. Just two years later the show would air in Spain and France, followed by Turkey, Finland and Sweden and before long it would have aired in a total of 43 countries to over a billion viewers. When you think about it, this is a pretty ingenious concept. You don't need an audience or a large fancy studio, all you need is a couple of presenters, phone hotlines to scam the kids out of their parents' money and there you go! You're now playing a video game on live national TV, showing off your mad Hugo skills to everyone and winning prizes for it. It's basically streaming before streaming was a thing. Not to mention that if you were in one of the first countries where Hugo aired, the graphics were pretty impressive too. I mean, 1990 and 1992? We were still at the beginning of the 16-bit wars. If you didn't own a 16-bit console or computer, chances are that graphically Hugo was well ahead of any games you owned at the time. Of course, the gameplay still looked terrible, but I think that's easy to ignore given the novelty of it all. But then again, if you were on the latter countries to host the game show, Hugo wasn't quite as impressive anymore. In my home country of Portugal, for example, it aired between 1997 and lasted up until 2001. 
it's kind of hard to be impressed by Hugo's graphics when we were all playing Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy VII and had the PlayStation 2, Xbox and GameCube right around the corner. And in some countries, Hugo lasted until the mid to late 2000s, with the Polish version airing until 2009. I mean, damn! We were well into the Uncharted and Gears of War era by then. Not bad, Hugo! But during its height, the Hugo Media Empire was more than just a game show. You also had merchandising like Hugo toys or plushies, and more importantly, video games. The first game called Skyrim Troll den Hugo was launched for the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. And to my recollection, it was just a port of the game show that you could play at home. In fact, the game show basically ran on two Amiga 3000 computers. Though I'm guessing the extra processing power was needed to register the phone inputs and convert them into something the game could recognize. Because when you get down to it, this is a pretty basic Amiga game that no one would have better than I had the game show not been so successful. And in later years, we'd get more ports and sequels to Windows PCs and the PS1. These new releases were also just home conversions of the game show, as the game show kept adding new levels, sequels and storylines as the years progressed. The thing is, these games were pretty damn successful in my country, especially the PS1 version as I often run into the game when people are selling their old PS1 collections. Personally, even back then I never got the appeal of buying a home port of this game. I mean, at that point I'd rather just be playing Final Fantasy or Soul Reaver, but whatever. And I'm guessing the developers realized this too, because by the time the PS2 era came along, the home games received quite an overhaul, though the TV game show still looked pretty much the same. In the end, over 30 Hugo games were created with a combined sales figure of over 10 million units, so clearly this cash cow was here to stay. So some of you might ask, well, what happened to Hugo? Well, surprisingly, he's still around. They're still making Hugo games. Though this time for mobile devices and apparently there's even a Hugo movie in the works. Who even asked for this? So, uh, yeah, a 28 year long career, 30 games, 42 countries, 10 million in game sales, not bad for the small unassuming troll. Though if you ask me, the game still look like a big pile of shit. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Stickers Retro Corner. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe and share this video. All that fun social media stuff. And be sure to hit that notification bell icon to know when a new video is out. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye!